he's um, always like super on it in training, always totally focused, um, doesn't get out of shape very easily. So after trials in April, to be honest, when a lot of athletes were getting fed the message, you know, Rio's just around the corner, we need to be back on training, we need to smash everything. With Scott, it's actually been trying to keep things fairly calm because he maintains his fitness incredibly well. And if he, for some reason, after a break gets out of shape, he can get it back really, really quickly. So actually, like two months for Scott is a really long time. Uh, so to be honest, for us, we're just keeping things pretty low key at the moment, just working on technical areas a little bit more, and not doing anything too special in terms of training content. Um, it's not really until August when you know the rest of the swimmers are kind of having their downtime from the season, and I'll be coaching Scott pretty much by himself. That we'll get into the nitty gritty side of things and. That's when you know the more focused start uh, stuff starts, and I'll get a bit more exciting for us. It was quite difficult for me at first. Um, I actually had to give a little presentation to a group of coaches who were just starting out the other day, and um, it was their their ex athletes as well. And the presentation was on the transition from athlete into coach. And um, Scott was probably the most difficult athlete that I, I found for that transition because. Like I said, a lot of my experience was at quite high level performance sport and I had quite a big expectation on the athletes who were you know, aiming for Olympic and Paralympic selection and success. So I had an expectation of you know, how Scott's behaviour should be. And um, with his classification, you know, that's more difficult for him than other people. So physically in training, there, there's no issue whatsoever. He's just as capable as everyone else. He keeps up with everyone in training. You know, we don't have to adapt things, but what I have had to adapt is maybe my approach to my communication with him. And the, the only issues we've ever had in our relationship is a breakdown in communication, which is usually my lack of understanding of his needs. And um, maybe, maybe not understanding um, different levels of communication you can have with different athletes. So it's been a huge learning experience for me and something that I'll take on the rest of my life in coaching, I think. Um, that's a good question. I mean, I, I do have experience of the Olympics as, a, as an athlete and a couple of Commonwealth Games as an athlete, so I'm pretty familiar with the village setup. So, again, I think that's part of the reason that I was selected onto the team is that I've got experience and I think I can be quite a calming influence on people. I don't get stressed myself that easily, which is the kind of person that I guess you want around the athletes. The, probably the thing that will be difficult for me is, is, is a, a, that role and you know what, what kind of role do, do the athletes need with the coach. Um, the best thing about being a coach is probably also the worst thing about being a coach, which is probably the thing that surprised me the most is the amount of excitement and, and emotion that goes on while, you're, while your athlete is competing. So like I said, I'm quite a calm person, and e but even still, like when one of, one of my athletes is performing, if, if they perform poorly, like it cuts me really, really deeply, like more than when I performed poorly as a swimmer. And then conversely, if, if one of your athletes, you know, does a massive best time, like the feeling of joy that you get inside for that person is like, it's indescribable. And it's, I don't know if it's because as an athlete you're kind of trained to subdue those emotions and, you know, stay calm, be professional, you know, don't give away your emotions to your competitors that when you perform poorly or you perform well, you know, it's kind of steely faced and you just kind of, Okay, that was a bad swim, move on. Oh, that was a good swim, what's the next target? Whereas, you know, coaching, because you maybe get 10 swims in a session and five might be amazing and five might be poor. Like the roller coaster of emotions is like the best and worst thing about coaching. Okay.